My boyfriend, 29, and I, 24, are very clingy and I'm overwhelmed. Should I dump him? We started talking about a month ago, and hit it off wonderfully. I felt like I'd never met someone I meshed with so well. I was recently out of another relationship, so I was trying to take it slow and look for red flags. I didn't see anything at the time and things progressed quickly. We started dating maybe two weeks after meeting each other. I was madly into him but quickly found that he's really clingy. I don't do well with clingy but I was like oh well. He definitely has trust issues and keeps bringing how I talk to so many guys. I don't. He is kind of possessive and a bit jealous, but nothing extreme. He views a lot of my life as unhealthy so he wants me to work on that, understandably, but he's pushing me every day about it. It's stressing me out a lot. We had a talk about how I felt things were going way too quickly and I would like to slow down. He thought I was dumping him at first and got very upset, but then was really receptive when I said I wasn't leaving him. Well two days later he says he wants to marry me and tries to get me to say I want to marry him too. I wouldn't. And he ended up saying it's okay. I know you want to. You do. You want to marry me, it's okay. He said things like this about getting me pregnant too. I've communicated that I wouldn't want kids for another 10 years at least. At first he'd said the same thing. Now he's saying otherwise. We get along well but we've only known each other for about a month and it feels way too extreme. It's just all moving a bit too quickly and now I'm at the point where I just don't want to be in a relationship with this guy. He's extremely sensitive and clearly head over heels for me. I really liked him but now I'm kind of overwhelmed and scared and realizing I definitely wasn't ready for this. I just don't know what to do and any advice would be appreciated. Parents, 52 male, 50 female, keep asking me, 22 female, for money. I would first like to say I love my parents dearly. I always have. They've done so much for me and I like to return the favor but I'm starting to get frustrated. We've always struggled a bit with money and I've been happy to help them in the past, but I promise this is the last time we will ask for money as a sentence I keep hearing. When I was a teenager I was given a nice chunk of settlement money after a bad car accident I was in. Since I was a minor when this happened, my parents know all about the money I received. Once I turned 18 and had access to the money asked me to give them around 20k to help with bills and debt. My parents just raised me for 18 years, how could I deny it? I gave them money with no hesitation. Then about a year later, they asked for $8,000 more because they were behind in bills again. I wasn't as enthused to help out, but they're my parents and I love them. The least I could do is help. Shortly after that they said my brothers, 25 male, business was struggling and they needed about 10k to help him on his feet. I was never that close to my brother but I felt obligated to help out. I just received an email from my mother asking for another $15,000 because my brother is starting to add his own debt to theirs. I feel guilty because I really do not want to send them any more. I'm forever grateful that they were able to get the money for me in the first place but I really, really wish they didn't know about it. And realistically I know I will not be seeing that money again. I expected it the first time they asked, and I had no issues with helping I was happy too. But I hate feeling like I'm stuck with either dropping thousands of dollars on something I'll never get again or by feeling like an asshole by telling my parents no. I feel like a horrible daughter for even hesitating, but this money is for my future. It's helped me with college and it's covering a lot of my medical bills. I'm struggling to think of a response any advice would be appreciated. How do I, 28 female, tell my family to back off and let me take care of things for my house? I get that everyone wants to help out but sometimes I feel like I speak a different language and live in a different world than everyone else. I'm 90% sure my roof needs some major renovation if I want it to be fully isolated and up to modern ecological standards. It's the sort of roof that has been repaired and improved over time but now it's time for a complete redo. I just came out of an hour long back and forth discussion with my parents about what I should do and how I should do it, and how all of this works, while I did my research already for credible roofing companies nearby. Even when I showed them 5 examples to show that nobody does free inspections anymore they still didn't believe me. They tried their hardest to prove their point and find one that did free inspections but it turns out they only did minor repairs and their online presence was shady and almost non-existing, last update was 2017. It also seems like they have decided which company I should eventually work with to get solar panels. Then came the discussion with my aunt about furniture. I'm still 3 weeks away from getting the keys, then we need to renovate almost half of the place which will take 2 to 3 months. I barely know the dimensions of the living room, but she said just call the realtor and ask if you can stop by on Fridays. We did that as well, 15 years ago when the market wasn't so chaotic. I'm sure the realtor has plenty of freaking time to spend half a day on a client that's already a done deal. I mean he's a nice guy but he's not going to spend more time on me than necessary. He has homes to sell to people. And omfg the garden. I don't give a flying frick about what plants are in my garden and what I should add or remove. I'm going to live on my own in a 2-3 to three person house, I don't. 
have time for a complicated garden. I'm going to hire a gardener to figure it out for me so that everything is low maintenance for the next two to three years. I lost count of how many times I said how I want my garden to look and function. Lastly, the rented freaking boiler. I've had it up to here with people who have said that I should disassemble it and call up the company to pick it up. It says in the freaking contract that I can't do that or risk a fine on top of the regular disassembly costs. And no, I don't need you to help me disassemble it. I have no freaking idea how that adds anything to the discussion that we're having about it. It's going to be my rented boiler and I have to pay the fine when you're the one who set off frick it, we'll do it ourselves. Every discussion drives me to the point where yelling seems to be the only way to get them to stop for at least 6 hours, then it starts all over again. I'm so freaking done with everything and everyone and honestly once I move into my house I don't want to see anyone for anything for at least half a year. I'm not spending this much money on a house for everyone to walk all over me and tell me how to live my new life, what to do, what sort of tiles to get where and when, etc. I'm sorry for the rant but I had to get it out of my system because this has been going on for the past two months between me and almost everyone older than me since I heard that I got the house. I, 23 female, feel left out because my boyfriend, 27 male, and his best friend, 22 female, want to have moments alone. I am with my boyfriend, let's call him Neil, since 7 month now. I know his best friend from childhood, let's call her Sasha, very well because we were in the same class and I know her since 4 years. She is one of my closest friend, and she is the person who introduced me to my boyfriend. Neil and I were friend during 9 month before our relationship. During those 9 months Sasha, Neil and I stick together all the time. We, were having a blast, go to vacation, cinema, drink together act. To the moment where I realize I like Neil a lot, and I declared my love for him. Sasha was happy for us and kind of saw it coming, even teasing us with it a little. Neil and I started going out, but still saw Sasha, just a little less than before because we needed intimacy at the start. After a few months though, it came back to normal and we saw the three of us a lot, like before. I was very happy that the situation didn't make Sasha uncomfortable, I have discussed it with her and she says it was alright. Plus, I was hanging out with two of the most important person in my life, what could I ask more? However, life is life, and we eventually see Sasha less because she got a job. Beside that, I always try to the see her the most possible, with or without Neil. The problem is, for some reason, Neil and Sasha practically stopped to see each other without me, something that was happening when Neil and I were not together. For me it's normal for Neil to see Sasha without me sometimes because she is his best friend, I wouldn't want to see my best friend with my boyfriend all the time. So I started to feel guilty, because sometimes Neil or Sasha would tell me that they miss seeing one another alone. I was feeling like the annoying girlfriend that keeps friends apart. I know they don't mean to hurt me when they say that, but it kind of did anyway. I already told them that they can see each other without me, that I can understand. But it doesn't seem to do something and it makes me feel bad. For example, a few days ago Neil, Sasha and another friend of ours asked me to go at the cinema. That day I was feeling a little sick plus I was still feeling guilty that Neil and Sasha never see each other alone anymore so I said I was too tired. The next day, when I saw Sasha, she said they had a blast and she was so happy to have been able to talk to Neil alone, because the other friend left early. Two days later, I saw Neil and he says exactly the same thing. Since yesterday I feel quite sad because I feel like a burden for their relationship, if it makes them so happy to see each other without me I don't know what to do. Should just I keep cancelling things so they can be together sometimes? This all situation makes me unhappy since I both love Sasha and Neil very much. I don't know what to do. And before everyone makes assumptions, they are the two persons I trust the most, the possibility of cheating is not even a question here. Neil considers Sasha as family and it's the same the other way around.